Welcome back for today's video as we head towards the tail end of the month of September for the year 2019. I got nine polls that have come out over the past few days, so a ton of new data to go over. Five of these are going to be national polls and then four state-specific results looking at the early on states within this Democratic primary process, looking at Iowa, New Hampshire, Nevada, as well as another California poll. But first, I'm going to start with the national results. And based on the data that we're getting, it is clear in evident that the U.S. Senator from Massachusetts, Elizabeth Warren, is surging in the polls. And some of this data will see that she's even overtaking Joe Biden in some of these results. So first, starting off here with the morning consult, this is the strongest numbers that we've been seeing from Elizabeth Warren in these weekly morning consult polls up there in second place at 20% support. Bernie Sanders in third at 19%. Also in first place there, Joe Biden still hovering around 32% of support. And then we go over to the early primary states and Warren doing much better in this week's morning consult poll amongst those early primary state voters up to second place with 17% support. Also Joe Biden there at 34% and Bernie Sanders at 16 percentage points. And we go down and take a look at how things have been trending over time. And this purple line has been Elizabeth Warren. You can see the big jump that she's taken in recent weeks and especially um, just in terms of the overall positive trend here, but even more so over the past couple weeks compared to the general positive trend that Warren had been seeing in the months prior and the first time that she's been able to jump past Bernie Sanders in these morning consult numbers. Now going over to another national poll. This one is from Ipsos, and we see that Joe Biden in first place at 20% support, followed by in second place Elizabeth Warren at 14%, Bernie Sanders at 13 percentage points. All the other candidates are registering in the mid to lower single digits. And I don't like these polls as much that offer they don't know who they're going to vote for as an option because that's polling at 28 percentage points. I'd rather at least know who these people are leaning towards if they had to vote in the primary today to give us a better sense at where things really truly stand. But that's the case here with this Ipsos poll where the candidates are a little bit lower with their numbers than you're going to see with those other polls where they don't give the don't know as an option for the voters to choose from. Moving on to another national poll, this one from Quinnipiac, an extremely strong result from Elizabeth Warren. She's actually in first place in this one at 27% support, followed by Joe Biden, who's in second place at 25 points. And then in third place, we have Bernie Sanders at 16 percentage points. And we take a look at the difference in this month's Quinnipiac poll compared to what we were seeing last month. In August, Biden was in first place with 32%. So he's down seven percentage points. Warren was at 19%. So she is up eight percentage points. And then Sanders is up one percentage point from 15 points of support up to 16 points. And Kamala Harris taking a step back. She was at 7% and now down to just three percentage points. And you might be wondering, well, where is Warren getting her support from and how is she able to climb up in these polls? And it seems like she's taking a lot away from these Democratic candidates that are below the upper tier. So perhaps people who initially were behind candidates like a Kamala Harris, that's the big one probably, but also perhaps candidates like a Pete Buttigieg, Cory Booker, Beto O'Rourke, Amy Klobuchar, they can see the writing on the wall that their candidates probably aren't going to be able to get the kind of momentum to jump up into the upper tier. So it feels like Warren is getting a lot of that type of voter. Also with Joe Biden consistently taking steps back, it feels like Warren is peeling away some of Biden's support as well. Now going over to another national poll, this one from The Economist and YouGov, and we have a tie for first place, 25% of support for both Elizabeth Warren and Joe Biden, followed in third place by Bernie Sanders, who's at 16 percentage points, Pete Buttigieg at seven, Kamala Harris at six, and you can see how the rest of the field tapers off after that. And then the last national poll that I want to touch on shows a three-way race among the top three candidates with Biden at 25%, Warren at 23%, and Bernie Sanders at 22 percentage points. Pretty much a neck-and-neck -neck three-way race there in this particular result. And we can see from where things were in last month's Emerson poll, another situation where Warren has jumped up eight percentage points. She was at 15, now up to 23 points. And another really positive sign for Warren in this Emerson poll is she is doing the best head-to-head -head among Trump. Now, in a lot of these polls that we've been seeing in prior weeks and over the past few months, it 
tends to be the case where Biden and Sanders do better head to head against Trump than Elizabeth Warren. But here's a result where Warren has a two point lead over Trump, Biden a one point lead, and then Sanders losing by two points and Kamala Harris losing to Trump by four percentage points. So those are the five national polls I wanted to touch on. Now going over and taking a look at the four state specific results starting in Iowa. And this came out over the weekend and kind of got the wheels turning where a lot of people were saying, this is great news for Elizabeth Warren. And since this poll came out, we have seen a continued trend where Warren is getting better and better numbers in the poll. So in this one, from the Des Moines Register, which is considered the gold standard for these Iowa caucus polls, we see Joe Biden at 20% of support. And you compare that to where he was back in for instance, in December, it was at 32%, and it's been consistently trending in a negative direction since then. He was then down to 27, then to 23, and now in September, he's at 20% of support. Also, Pete Buttigieg taking quite a step back here. He was at 15%, which was kind of an outlier, a really strong number for him in the last poll, which was in June, now down to 9% of support. And then Bernie Sanders also has been taking some step backs here in these Des Moines Register polls, where back in March he was at 25%, then he took a step back to 16%, and now in this one, not a great number here for Bernie at 11 percentage points. Now, out of all of the candidates, I think Sanders has the best opportunity to outperform what the polls are saying, just based on his grassroots network of support. I mean, you have to consider the fact that Sanders has reached a million unique individual donors to his campaign, and he's reached that faster than than any candidate has ever been able to get to that goal. So it might not totally be reflective in what the poll numbers are saying for Sanders, but he definitely has a strong grassroots network of support and people volunteering and helping out his candidacy where it is possible that he could outperform what the polls are saying. Specifically in caucus states, that was a big factor for Sanders back in 2016 where he outperformed in the caucuses on what, especially what the polls were indicating. And we'll see if that's going to be the case for him in Iowa or if he is truly taking this type of step back in the state. We'll see if that is the case or not. But then we also see Elizabeth Warren here surging up into first place, gaining seven points from where she was back in June. She was at 15 percentage points, now up to 22 percent and in first place in the state of Iowa in this Des Moines Register poll. Now moving over and taking a look at some new numbers out of New Hampshire, and this one coming from Monmouth in another poll where Elizabeth Warren has surged into first place, 27% of support. We compare this back to where things were in May, where Warren was just at 8%. A big dive back for Joe Biden in the Monmouth results, where back in May he was at 36%, now down to 25%, so receding 11 points. And also Bernie Sanders receding 6 points. He was at 18, now down to 12. Now moving over to the state of Nevada, a Suffolk poll, and we can see here Joe Biden has first place competitive between himself and Elizabeth Warren, certainly. So we see Joe Biden here at 23% of support followed by Elizabeth Warren, who's a little over 19%, and then Bernie Sanders at around 14% support in this new Suffolk poll out of the state of Nevada. And to wrap things up, just to close things out, taking a look at a very important state, this time around California, moving their primary date way up in the process. And we can see another situation where Elizabeth Warren surging in the polls back in June from the LA Times in this California primary poll. We can see that she was in second place at 18%. Joe Biden was in first place at 22%. But Warren has now gained 11 percentage points in a relatively short period of time, but up to 29%. And in first place, Biden losing a couple of points down to 20%. Bernie Sanders gaining a couple points up to 19%. But a big loser also in this one is going to be Kamala Harris, where she was at 13 points, now all the way down to just 8 percentage points in the home state where she is the senator from, a really bad sign for Kamala's chances at going on and getting back to being competitive in this primary process. So those are the nine polls that I wanted to touch on in this video. And we can see a consistent trend, especially over the past couple of weeks where Elizabeth Warren has been surging. Joe Biden in general has been taking another step back while Bernie Sanders has been about even to around where he's been in recent weeks as well. And I wouldn't be surprised if this turned into a two-candidate race at the end of the day between Warren and Sanders because it feels like 
with the strong grassroots network behind Sanders' campaign and how many devoted supporters he has, it feels like he's going to consistently hover around these particular numbers that we've seen from him. I'd be surprised to see another step back from him in the numbers that we've been seeing. But Joe Biden, it just doesn't feel like his support is as strong potentially. It's more people that are just nostalgic about the Obama years and Joe Biden being the vice president for eight years. And it seems like as the voters are learning more about the other candidates and the policies that they have to bring to the table, specifically Elizabeth Warren, Biden has been taking steps back while his voters have been going over potentially to somebody like a Warren. So we'll see, especially with those first two states being Iowa and New Hampshire, two states where both Warren and Sanders could potentially do very well. And if they finish first and second in those first two states, then it could be a momentum builder for their two candidacies and make it into a two-candidate race. We'll see if that is the case or not. We still have a lot of time to go and some more debates before we get into these first caucus in primary states. I'm really looking forward to seeing how all this plays out in the coming months as we get closer to those results where we're actually getting votes in that we can count and look over that data. So thanks guys for stopping on in. Consider subscribing to my YouTube channel and I hope to see you guys back here for future videos.